These two might be wondering if they will sleep together, but what they should be wondering is how well they will sleep together. There are so many things to consider when sleeping with a partner. We each have preferences for things like sleep positions, schedules, night lights, white noise, overall environments, and more. That makes sharing a bed with a partner one of the biggest challenges in any relationship. Here's the good news, there's a better way to do this, and we're gonna uncover how. A lot of people think that how closely you sleep to your partner says something about your relationship. But the truth is, how you're most comfortable sleeping is extremely personal. One partner might feel neglected without a little bit of cuddling, while the other gets a little too hot. You shouldn't take this personally. It has more to do with your physiology than your actual relationship. Another issue could be sleep schedules. Do you think you have to go to bed at the same time as your partner? To be honest, you don't. Everyone has a chronotype which determines their sleep schedule, and not all couples have the same chronotypes. We'll be talking more about understanding your chronotypes in a later episode, but for now, you just need to know that to be at your best, sometimes you need to go to bed at a different time than your partner. Fortunately, having different sleep schedules doesn't mean that you have to miss out on pillow talk. There are a ton of ways to compromise. Make a point of spending time together earlier in the evening to break down your day, or have the night owl hang out and read while the early bird gets some rest. And if you're the early bird and you're sensitive to light, it's not a bad idea to invest in a sleep mask. Another common disruption to your sleep are the conditions that you sleep in. Maybe one of you sleeps hot and the other one sleeps cold. And if you can't find bedding that works for both of you, a few simple tricks are use separate covers, uncover your feet, or wear less clothing when you sleep. Now that we've discussed strategies to help with thermoregulation, let's talk about snoring. If you've ever heard snores so loud you think you're sleeping next to your grandfather, I've got some suggestions for you. Now, snoring isn't necessarily something that you want to cover up as it could be a sign of sleep apnea. It's important to address this issue with the sleep doctor, but while you're working that out, I recommend using either a pillow wall, earplugs, or Gary. This one's light rain on a tin roof. And if Gary isn't available, a sound machine is also a good choice. And while you're at it, make sure that a bad mattress isn't the thing that's disrupting your sleep. Look for something that's large enough, provides great comfort and support, and minimizes sleep disruption. And lastly, if none of these suggestions help, look into whether you or your partner might have a sleep disorder like insomnia, sleep apnea, even restless leg syndrome. Of course, the honeymoon phase has to end, but with these tips, there's no reason that the next phase can't be just as amazing.